In this video, we're going to go over the way that lenses work. One of the nice things is that lenses share a lot of similarities with mirrors. And so if you know how to work with one, it's not very difficult to work with the other. Lenses work because of Snell's law. When an object passes from one medium, say the air, into another medium, say glass, it bends a little bit. If it then passes out of the glass into the air again, it will bend a second time. Just as we did with mirrors, let's see how we can draw ray tracing diagrams for lenses. Throughout this video, we're going to be using something known as the thin lens approximation. The thin lens approximation just means that we can imagine the lens as an extremely thin sheet of whatever material it's made out of. By doing this, we can just pretend that all of the bending of the light happens in one place. Of course, in reality, the light gets bent twice, once when it enters the lens and once when it leaves the lens, but we won't worry about that here. When doing the ray tracing diagrams for a thin lens approximation, we represent the lens by this vertical line. These markings are not arrows. They indicate to us whether the lens is converging or diverging. This represents a converging lens, because any light ray that comes in will be converged towards a point on this line, up this way or down this way. Let's draw the primary rays for this lens. It turns out that the primary rays for a lens are the same as the primary rays for a mirror. The only difference is that instead of bouncing back, the light rays will pass through the lens. Let's refresh our memory on what those primary rays are. For mirrors, one of those rays was the ray that passed through the center of the mirror. That ray bounced back in the same direction that it came. It's the same thing with the lens. One of the primary rays is passing through the center of the mirror. The only difference is that instead of bouncing off, it just travels straight through. The other two primary rays involve the focal point. Unlike with mirrors though, we actually have to draw a focal point on both sides of the lens in order to do a ray tracing diagram. The ray that passes horizontally from the object ends up being refracted into the focal point on the other side of the lens. That looks like this. The last primary ray that we consider is the ray that passes from the object through the focal point of the same side of the lens. As you probably expect, this ray is just refracted horizontally on the other side of the lens. That looks like this. Thankfully, I was able to draw my diagram reasonably well. Notice that there's a point on this side of the lens where all of the rays converge. This is the location that the image will be. All of these rays started above this horizontal line and ended up below that horizontal line. This means that the image is going to be flipped upside down. Let's do another ray tracing diagram, but this time for a diverging lens. As before, we have one focal point on each side. However, we flipped the direction of these lines in order to indicate that this lens is diverging. Let's do the same primary rays as before. The easiest one is always the one that passes directly through the center of the lens. It's not refracted at all and just continues on in a straight line. Next, let's draw the line that travels horizontally from the object. For the converging lens, the line that traveled horizontally from the object was refracted through the focal point on the opposite side of the lens. However, that can't happen in this case because the lens is diverging. Instead, that light ray will be refracted as though it was coming from the focal point on the same side of the lens as the object. So we draw it like this. We have this horizontal ray and we want it to be refracted as though it was coming from the focal point.
The last ray we care about is always a ray that's traveling towards the focal point. When we were dealing with the converging lens, this ray passed from the object and through the focal point on the same side of the lens as the object. However, for a diverging lens, we want this ray to leave the object as though it was traveling towards the focal point on the far side of the lens. This ray will then get refracted and travel horizontally off on the other side. And there we go. There's our ray tracing diagram for this example. Where is the image for this example? In the converging case, the image ended up on the opposite side of the lens as the object. It was the place where all of the rays converged after they had been refracted by the lens. However, just like with the diverging mirror, there is no such place for a diverging lens. Remember in the example that we did with the diverging lens, we had to look through the lens in order to see the image. It's the same thing here. If we were standing here, we would have to look through this lens to see the image. The location that the image would appear to be would be the location that all of these rays appeared to be coming from to our eyes. To find that place, we just have to trace these rays behind the lens. I wish I could have used a different color, but there's been some work that's being done in these rooms and one of my markers seems to have disappeared. Notice that except for the light ray that passes through the center of the lens, these light rays don't actually ever come from this location. It's just how it would appear to us. Our eyes would look at this and see a ray of light coming from this direction. Our brain, of course, does not know that the light ray was bent on its way to us so it just assumes that the light ray continued in a straight line all the way back. And it would see the location of the image as being right here, where all three of those rays converged. Notice that in this case, the image will be right side up. These rays all converge on a point that is above this horizontal line. As with mirrors, this is not the only way to determine the behavior of the lens. We can also use some equations to describe the same thing. This equation looks a lot like the mirror equation because lenses are in many ways a lot like mirrors. The only difference is whether or not these numbers are positive or negative. These are the rules for the lens equation. As before, O represents the distance from the lens to the object and is always positive. I represents the distance from the lens to the image. A positive image location indicates that the image is real. In the example that we did earlier in DL, we saw how we could focus an image onto a screen using a lens. In this case, the image and the object distance were both positive because the image was real. It could be focused onto a screen. However, in the second example from that video, we saw a virtual image that could not be focused onto a screen. The image distance for this case would be negative. The focal point follows a similar scheme. For converging mirrors, the focal distance is positive, while for diverging mirrors, the focal distance is negative. The magnification for lenses also looks very similar to the one for mirrors. As before, if we know the height of the image and the height of the object, we can just divide the two in order to find the magnification. However, in general, we're going to have problems where we're solving for image or object locations. In this case, you can just take the image location and divide by the object location and put a negative sign on it. You do, however, have to be careful to make sure you include the correct sign on the image distance and the object distance as we talked about just a few moments ago.